I was a rebel from the time I was born. Um, my mother says the first thing I learned how to say was, I'll do it myself. Uh, I was always questioning, always questioning. He went, he, he, he went on to, we went on. Can you tell the Muslim people their lives are as precious as our lives? Can you take the drones out of the hands of the CIA? Can you stop the signature strikes that are killing people on the basis of suspicious activities? We're addressing that, man. apologize to the thousands of Muslims that you have killed? Will you compensate the innocent family victims? That will make us safer here at home. I love my country. I love the rule of law. The drones are making us less safe and keeping people in a net. The voice of that woman uh, is worth paying attention to. Is it the responsibility of free people to do something, to take steps to deal with such a threat before such an attack occurs? Yes, Mr. Rumsfeld, I think we need weapons inspections, not war. Why are you obstructing the inspections? Is this really about oil? Uh, How Mr. many civilians will be killed? Mr. Secretary, would you suspend uh, for a minute and... Uh, if really we, about oil? Why is it if we could ask the staff to uh, see to it that our guests were escorted. To this day, we at Code Pink are one of the few who follow these guys around, whether it's on a book tour or they're in a speaking engagement. We try to go whenever we can and bust into the room and saying, arrest that guy for war crimes, because we don't forget. When I look at this issue of drone warfare, it really comes out of a policy that believes that we can fight the injustices against us of 9-11 by what's over now a decade of killing and just keep the killing going. We have killed so many people since 9-11, so many times over the people that were killed in the World Trade Center. And it just keeps on going and going. A group of 34 very brave Americans, not only from Code Pink, but groups like Veterans for Peace, that went to say to the Pakistanis, we do not support the drone program, and we care about you and your lives. Your lives are as precious as our lives. You're joining with people from around the country who are sick and tired of our government spying on us. We feel like privacy is a, an American value, and whether this is happening under a Democratic or a Republican administration is not the point. The point is that the NSA is out of control, and that uh, we want to uh, be here to assert our right that when we call somebody or we write an email to somebody or we use the internet, uh, that that's our own business and not our government's business. To push back against the Republican right-wing dinosaur agenda that calls for women's reproductive rights to be canceled and that calls for, for birth control and Planned Parenthood to stop existing. Uh, we really want to say that it's our bodies, our choice, and to the news lately that certain Congress people, elected officials, can't say the word vagina, we say if you can't say vagina, then don't legislate it. The American people want diplomacy to work. Yes. The American people don't want war. Yes. The American people look at Iraq and say, oh, APAC was one of those groups that pushed us into that war. How did that work out? No. So American people are saying, maybe we shouldn't listen to those warmongers. Maybe we shouldn't allow APAC to try to run U.S. policy in the Middle East. People are getting smart about APAC and they don't like what they're seeing. My name is Medea Benjamin. I'm 
one of the co-founders of the peace group Code Pink, and I've been to Gaza five times, two times before the Israeli-imposed siege that began in 2006. Back then it was a relatively thriving society, today it's a place of desolation where people don't have the right to go in and out of their country, they don't have the right to go outside to seek critical medical treatment, they don't have the right to even rebuild their homes that were destroyed when Israel invaded Gaza in December 2006 and killed over 1,400 people. And the world leaders have not done enough to rectify this situation, and so the people have had to do it. And that's why this freedom flotilla of votes was so critical. It is saying to the world community, do something about Gaza. Lift the siege of yeah. Gaza. Three messages this week, and the first one is the overarching issue of money and politics. There was one disruption during the speech when Code Pink protesters held up a banner. Everyone at last night's Republican National Convention finale was happy for Mitt Romney achieving the nomination. Three protesters started shouting during his acceptance speech. A man and two women, both from the Code Pink Women for Peace organization, were escorted out. They shouted, we need a better America and democracy is not a business. This is the most expensive election in U.S. history. And we know that all of our issues can't have success if we continue to prioritize corporate donations to candidates. Uh, and so we're here to say, let's bring this ba government back to the people and away from the corporations. And secondly, we're here to oppose the ongoing wars and occupations that were started by the Republican Party under Bush. The over 11 years of occupation of Afghanistan, the thousands of innocent civilians and U.S. soldiers who have lost their lives for no good reason, and now the ongoing killer drone attacks, which are killing innocent civilians from Pakistan to Somalia to Yemen daily and without due process or just trial. Tonight, they covered the entrances near Time Warner Cable Arena against war and targeting any politicians who came their way. Every song about war. Every song song to the melody of when the saints go marching in, no matter what the words are. We make them up as we go along. We improvise. That's what makes it kind of fun. The singers from the anti-war group Code Pink. Here, the youngest is 23 and the oldest? Well, that would be 66-year-old retired Army Colonel Ann Wright. We'll see over the next two years or so. Well, I see that uh, we have momentum on our side because of where the American people are. And uh, some people call it war weariness, which I think is true. But I also think there's a war wiseness where American people have learned that even if they want to help the Syrian people, for example, that U.S. military intervention is just going to make matters worse because look at the record in Afghanistan, look at the record in Iraq. And that is something that is... Uh, a, a positive development in uh, Americans not being very anxious to get involved in another war. Uh, and I think we have to build on that. And part of building on that is to say uh, that one of the reasons that allows us to get into these wars is because we have this strong military industrial complex that does eat up so much of our, uh, of our, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the pie. Uh, and then move towards how are we going to shrink that piece of the pie. They say we must be loyal to the red, white, and blue. Tie a yellow ribbon to support our fighting troops. I'm looking for some colors to match the way I think. I've never been one for fashion, but today I'm wearing pink. Cause when the code is orange, oh, there's danger in the air. When the code is red, go hide your head, say your prayers. They're trying to keep us frightened, like we're always on the brink. But I've got better things to do, so today I'm wearing pink. Code pink, code pink, code pink. Code pink. We're never out of fashion, we never fade or shrink. We're the color of the future for a country on the brink, code pink.